Hello, hi guys. Um, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to be doing another um review. This is super fun and um today I will be doing another review and this time around I'm doing a review on a book called The Hairdresser of Harare by Tendai Hushu. Um, it says it's a subtle and refreshing story of life in contemporary Harare, a novel about morality, prejudice, um, and ambition told with humor and tragedy, which is exactly what I felt about this um, book. It was very interesting to get a hold of the book at the time that I did. Because honestly, at the time, I should confess that I feel like I was reading more um, white books in a sense we like, because I started reading when I was pretty young. But the only books I had access to at the time were like white writers and like I was sort of forced to read those because... Um, it, it was all I had like my I remember at my grandmother's place like there was literally a home library like so many books and I read most of those books but it was never really anything I could relate to it was more of um like I get to experience like the world differently because it's not it's not my life like it's not something I can relate to so it, it's like I'm traveling in um all these other places in Europe through these books I am experiencing um a different life through these books um and and just experiencing how other people or other races um live their lives but I had I hadn't read enough black books when I got this one. Firstly, with time, I did come across a couple of books. Like, I did come across, like, Jordan Gunny's work. I came across, like, um, is it Maru, some Botswana writers. Um, and then, like, also with high school, we were exposed to more black writers. Not really more, but because also high school was weird because we were reading white writers at some point. And then there was, like, one, maybe one book that will be, like, from a black writer. So, um more or less what my point is this book was when i first received it it was necessary um for my reading um and for the type of books i had been reading this was something i needed to read um so and also it happened to be really an easy read in a sense where it's like the the font also like the the wedding is pretty it's not too small it's not too big um and it's really simplified in a sense so it's like a quick fun easy read type of thing but at the same time it's like um emotion evoking at the same time you like really fixed on it you can't stop reading it type of thing but at the same time it's like oh this is such a cute book you know like it's it's something you can just read um for a day maybe and then you die and then yeah so um my thoughts about the book so firstly the book is set in harare uh, which is the capital city of Zimbabwe, which I have never been to, but I am from the country. But um, it's it's set in Harare, and um, it's um, it's quite a surprise to see that this book came out of Zimbabwe um, for many reasons. Um, because let me just read what the book is about, and then you guys can sort of get an idea of what i mean so this is i'm just gonna read this for you guys so it says like um very good dark chocolate this is a delicious novel i agree with a bittersweet flavor i agree so there's vimbai which is the main uh, which is the main character in the book vimbai is um a hairdresser the best in mrs kumala's salon and she knows she's the queen on whom they all depend. Her situation is reversed when the good-looking, smooth-talking Dumisani joins them. However, his charm and desire to please slowly erode, erode um, Vimbai's rancor. And when he needs somewhere to leave, Vimbai becomes his landlady. So when Dumisani needs someone to accompany him to his brother's wedding to help smooth over a family upset, Vimbai obl obliges. Startled to find that the smart hairdresser is the skion of one of the wealthiest families in Harare, she is equally surprised by the warmth of their welcome, and it is their subsequent generosity which appears to foster the relationship between the two young people. 
the ambiguity of this deepening friendship used or embraced by Dumisani and Vimbaya with different futures in mind collapses in unexpected brutality when secrets and jealousies are exposed. So basically the book is about Vimbai. Vimbai is the main character and Dumisani who happens to joins to join the salon where Vimbai works, which is owned by uh, Mrs. Kumalo. So Mrs. Kumalo owns a salon in Harare and Vimbai works there as the sort of like the head hairdresser. And then later on Dumisani um Dumisani is a guy. Dumisani joins the salon is as well and is hired by Mrs. Kumalo um also to do hair but happens to be really good at it which is which is surprising excuse me which is surprising for a guy because you know people would assume that obviously ladies especially in Zim like ladies would know how to do hair better than men would but um so that wasn't the case with um Dumisani and Vimbai in this case so Dumisani comes along and he wins the hearts of many um and somehow tickles Vimbai the wrong way because i mean if you're used to being like the lead hairdresser in the salon and somehow there's this new guy out of nowhere who's just like taking your spot so um there's a bit of a clash between the two characters um in the beginning um but they later really bond um over some similarities and they also bond over Dumisani staying with Vimbai, like actually renting at her place. So Vimbai becomes like the landlord um, and Dumisani is staying. They now stay together and they now work together. And Vimbai also happens to have a child, I think it was a daughter, who also got along with Dumisani. So it's like now it's sort of like a small um, close family dynamic type of thing. And it's interesting when Vimbai later finds out that Dumisani is not as poor as he uh seemed to be or as he may appear to be um he happens to be from a very wealthy zimbabwean family um and vimbai later discovers this when um dumisani invites her over to a wedding to her to his brother's wedding and he asks her to come as a date and when vimbai gets there it's like lavish luxury money honey and now it's like whoa why didn't I know this? Like, why are you living like a destitute? You know, like you literally have everything at your disposal. You have a wealthy family. You have a family that loves you. I presume because they were very welcoming to, um, to Vimbai. But nonetheless, um, the book really touches on very touchy topics, um, um, especially like with socioeconomic issues generally. You know. Um, because you get to meet characters that are wealthy, like people that work for the government. Um, I think I read one one uh, of the scenes where there was a lady that I assume I know who they were trying to portray in the book, who is actually who actually was a minister at the time. I mean, when the um, when a couple of years back when they wrote the book. So the the book is um, a bit of a touch and go situation where it's like ah oh, i get why you did this like oh i get why this character is here i get why this character acts the way they do based on like just like the normal socioeconomic issues that um zimbabwe amongst other african countries are facing um including like things like um the government and you know the privileges of being from a wealthy family or being linked to someone in power and things like which is something that we all have experienced in africa generally um so that was an interesting thing to see but it's also very um touchy because it touches on a couple of um I could say taboo topics in Zimbabwe, which is like the LGBTQ um, plus community, which is not necessarily the most embraced um, community in Zimbabwe. So this book touches on that. And I was quite surprised to see that this is in the book because in Zim, this is literally taboo, you know. So for the fact that they had touched on that topic, which they actually dwell on quite a lot, like if you continue reading the book, because um, I don't want to ruin the surprise for you in case you haven't read the book. But um, so they dwell mostly on that. And it's interesting to see um, a country or a people or the characters rather or in the book embrace that, like embrace like homosexuality, embrace like um, that people can love who they want to love, that people are different and people um, can actually be in love with 
um, the same sex or both sexes or whoever they want to be in love with. So this was one of the things that I, that I really liked about the book because in Zimbabwe, literally it's taboo. But with time, I got to realize that um, the writer of the book, which I, who I didn't know when I first read the book, happens to be based in Germany, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm guessing uh, it was rather safer for him to write it from there than it was for the book to be released in Zimbabwe because honestly I mean I haven't been in the country for a long time so I wouldn't exactly know what I'm so what I'm talking about but I know for a fact that this would have raised eyebrows or it has raised eyebrows or is raising eyebrows um because um homosexuality is not really something that um Zimbabwe promotes or is um able to embrace as compared to like other countries so um yeah so if you're looking to read something really relaxing something really chilled and like it's it's a sweet nice novel it's like oh uh, i enjoy this it's like you want to keep reading and you are exposed to so much and you get to learn about the the country uh zimbabwe the cultures and how different people do things differently and um there is so many great lines as well that you may come across um like some some insightful quotes you know that you may fall in love with and more than anything um it's a beautiful book it's set in a salon so obviously there's gossip obviously there is um, a lot of stuff, you know, ladies fights, cat fights. There is all those things that you may you can imagine, like that could happen in a black salon. Um, but yeah, so this is one of my favorite books um, as well. Um, I really, I really liked reading this book, and um, yeah, I hope you check it out. Check it out because you will like it. I think it's available in many different places um i think you deserve to read this book but anyway so that was my feedback on the book if i were to rate the book from from a scale on a scale of um one to ten i would give it a seven um because obviously i think there could be some improvements in the book i did feel like the book was a bit um the writing specifically i feel like it was a bit um what's the term not necessarily immature, but I feel like it was written for rather um and I I think the book was written in a very simplified way. Like it was simplified for, for to for it to be digestible by anyone. Um of which I do think that, that could have affected the writing overall. Um but um I mean it's like I said it's an easy read, so it's a quick, fast book that you can just like hop onto and be done with type of book um and yeah i mean i was sad with some parts of the book that i wasn't expecting like there was some parts where i was like oh i wasn't expecting that how did that even happen you know or like ah, oh, i wish that didn't happen so there's lots of those moments in the book um that you would definitely come across but other than that it's a good book it's a it's a, it's a good book and it's a beautiful book also i really like the cover and i really like how it looks so check out the hairdresser of harare it's a recommendation of mine because i've read the book and i think you guys will like it too um other than that thank you so much for watching thank you for listening um you can leave your comments down below about the book if you've read it or if you do read it tell me what you guys thought about the book um and don't forget to check out my other videos where i am reviewing um tv shows i'm reviewing new music and other books and so much more um i will see you guys next time my next video will probably be about emily in paris but yeah so i'm excited for that one and hopefully you guys liked watching and you guys can tell your friends and your friends to tell their friends that uh, I sort of am the plug, you know, like I'll plug you with some cool books and some cool TV shows and some cool music and whatnot. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching and catch you next time from here. You know what it is. It is 
always, always love.